everyone, so I thought I'd talk about my experience with zone training. Uh, sorry I'm squinting, I've forgot my sunglasses. So anyway, um, yeah, uh, zone training when cycling. Uh, so yeah, w one of the main things um, about zone training is usually you're training for time, you're training in specific zones. Um, obviously you have two types of training, you have uh, power meter training in zones and you have um, heart rate training in zones. Uh, two, in my opinion, totally different things. Um, uh, since I've been training in zones, it's been a lot more efficient than just getting out there and cycling. Um, it, it, I enjoy it a lot more, it gives me a lot more structure. So I just thought I'd talk about my experience in zone training, my experience with zones, etc. So zone one, um, that's probably the um, basically just getting out there and just, just pedaling. So zone one, usually I stick to zone one when I'm on a commute. If I'm just going to get groceries or going to the shops or whatever, I will just stick to zone one um, because obviously I'm not training. Zone one isn't training. If you're on if you're on the on the bike and you're doing zone one, you're not training. You're um, just simply ticking over. It's almost like walking. Walking isn't exercising. Running is exercising. Um, I mean, walking walking is is exercising if you if you're obese, I guess. Um, but running, cars coming down here and I can't believe it. I'm, I'm literally a, a, a dead end road. Um, yeah, so just like walking isn't essentially exercise. Um, I mean, it's better than doing, it's better than sitting down. Um, running is exercise. So think of zone one, like the walking versus jogging or running. Um, so yeah, you, you basically it's good for recovery. Let's say you've just done a marathon and you hop at zone one on the bike the next day, no worries. Or you've just done a, you've just done Tour de France and you just hop on zone one, no worries. You know, you, you're recovering, it's better than sitting down doing nothing, etc. Uh, and yeah, it, you are burning, uh, a actively burning fat. Um, so then you've got zone two. Now, usually training starts at zone two. Um, zone two, ideal for fat loss. I, I believe the numbers are something like 70-30, so 70% 70 fat, fat loss, 30% uh, carbs. So you're predominantly burning fat. Um, which is good obviously for longer because you know your body stores more fat than you can store glycogen so it's a lot more ideal for endurance so you, if ever anyone's doing anything endurance they'll try and like three hours more they'll try and be in zone zone two at least at some points right um zone two like i said good for fat loss in my experience uh <laughs> i mean you've only got to look at the difference in me uh to see that you know it's, it's good for fat loss uh i pretty much cut my teeth on zone two rides um, did all my training in zone two rides the first year and a half um, and even fitness it's got me fitter even though I didn't think it would it's got me fitter so uh, so anyway let's let's talk about different zones uh, so zone two you, st you can still breathe through your nose um, you, you, you can still talk you know you're still feeling good obviously zone zone one's nothing right you, you, you could hold your breath almost um, zone two um, to get to the top end of zone two um, as obviously you've got a range haven't you you know it's not just zone two there's the be there's a beginning there's the end right so the top end of zone two uh, is a little bit more concentration zone one is literally just what you do zone two is a little bit more concentration especially for the top end you have to keep checking the numbers yet yeah, my legs are put out 220 watts whatever right um, like I said, it's a little bit harder. Breathing towards the end, towards the beginning of zone three, towards the top end of zone uh, two, you, you, you might start feel like start breathing through your mouth. Um, anyway, so let's talk about zone three. So zone three, you have to concentrate, um, but it's sustainable for hours, maybe two, maybe one, two, three hours, right? Depending on obviously your fitness level and how much you're used to putting out zone three. But, um, Zone three is uh, the kind of race pace, essentially. So if you're doing like a one, two, three hour race, yeah, you'd, well, maybe not one, but maybe if you're doing like a two, what, one and a half, two, three hour race, um, maybe even four hours, but I doubt it, you'd probably be in zone three. And zone three is a bit more racy, breathing out the mouth predominantly, um, sweating more, burning more carbs. It's more like 60-40. So it's more like 60% carbohydrates, 40% fat. So you, you, you're not burning as much fat. Uh, you're gonna be burning more calories. 
it's going to be harder essentially you're going to you're going to be putting more lactic acid in your legs your legs are going to be tired recovery is going to be longer etc um so zone three is good for stuff like triathlons um tour de france they're going to be in zone three most of the time uh, some of the time etc um so yeah how you feel in zone three uh you could probably have conversation um in my experience anyway you could have a conversation uh, not a full conversation maybe but a few words here a few words there a few words you know but not like blah 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 like you were reading a book out loud um zone four um well that's your threshold really you wouldn't you wouldn't want to be, be, I thought I heard something like a rattling. Um, between the the zone four, um, between the zone, you wouldn't really, uh, you, you wouldn't do it for any more than an hour. So you'd probably sustain zone four for one hour, uh, low zone four for one hour, high zone four for maybe 20, 30 minutes. Um, obviously you've set your zones on your FTP test. I could talk about FTP, te FTP test in another video. So zone four, breathing's, breathing's hard. Um, you know, you're feeling uh, a lot of pressure in your legs, like, oh, my legs are aching. Um, it's the kind of training, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's fitness. Your lungs are at, you're getting out of breath, you're sweating a lot more, you're probably burning more like 70, 30, 70 carbohydrates, 30% uh, fat. So yeah, you, you, you burn a lot more calories as well, and you, you know, it's not sustainable, like for, for the day and you certainly don't want to be going too much into zone four on a longer day like even if you're doing zone two mainly you don't want to be going too much into zone four because you will dip into too much of your glycogen reserves um zone five oh that's a that's, that's a tough one uh vo2 max um that's that's more like uh 120 percent of your of your best so um that's really straining the lungs putting a, a strain on the lungs and you, you will find that your uh, afterwards your lungs will hurt, you know, almost you almost be strained, uh, and that's them get that's a good thing. That's them getting stronger. Um, you will literally get get to the point where your body can't take in, in enough oxygen. So that's when your lungs start to hurt because you literally you can't take in enough oxygen to what your body uses. So that's that's when you really start to hurt. It's, it's sort of three three to five maybe 10 minutes if you really seasoned efforts but uh, i think the most i've done so far is four four minutes uh, about 350 watts uh, and that's fucking hard uh, if you do four times four three times three things like that it's oh it's really hard sessions um so yeah i don't really do zone six zone, zone six and zone seven are just like sprints aren't they for like 20 30 seconds maybe a minute you know if you're some beast but anyway um just start to talk about the sessions typically zone uh one and two you can sustain almost pretty much every day you know without too much rest you start doing zone three you know you start to need rest days zone four zone five etc so uh you probably wouldn't want to do more than one zone five session a week or maybe two zone four sessions a week but with rest days in between zone three uh, depending on your, your, uh, you know, your fitness level, you could possibly do zone three every day, as long as you refuel, uh, refuel well with carbohydrates, etc. Um, as for recovery, like I said, you, do, you zone five, you probably want to recover for probably about two or three days, depending on your levels. Um, like I said, zone zone one, zone two, etc. Um, th there's no recovery needed. Um, you know, unless you're really, really new to it. Um, and if you season, then, you know, I mean, if you're probably doing this zone training anyway, you probably season. So anyway, if you have any more questions, this is my experience. Um, I really enjoy the zone five sprints, zone four even. Um, I enjoy the zone three sweet spot. Um, I'll talk a little bit about sweet spot actually, before I go. So sweet spots, the pretty much the just uh, in layman's terms simply it's pretty much top end of zone three low end of zone four um it's supposed to be for uh for a small short race so maybe uh one hour 30 versus one hour so it's not like threshold where it's one hour it's more like maybe one hour 30 or something like that um and you can do it in sessions like you could do like 30 minutes and then have a little break and then maybe another 30 minutes or something like that so sweet spot um requires a lot of concentration it's quite tiring um but it's sustainable for you know a, a good amount of time maybe an hour maybe two hours depending on your fitness level uh sweet spot like i said top end of zone three bottom end of zone four 
Um, so anyway, um, if you have any questions about zone training or anything like that, let me know in the comments. And I hope you find this video helpful. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and I'll see you in the next video, everyone.